Okay, so um, yeah, so um, as I mentioned before, we are sponsoring 430 kids, and that's actually our, how you said, main objective to really make sure that kids get long term education. Um, so for that, we only have like recurring subscriptions, as you can see, sponsors can pay per month, per quarter, or per year. And this is really like long term because imagine if I would have, let's say, like a business or maybe even an ind individual person telling me like, hey, Stella, I'm interested in sponsoring 10 kids, but only for one year. I mean, then what's going to happen after this year? It would be extremely stressful for us if every single year we would need it to, you know, do another campaign and make sure that we get again enough sponsors in for those children. Um, plus also because our sponsorship is with individuals. So the fundraiser campaigns, for that one we also accept like business donations and stuff but the sponsorship it's really like individual people because you realize that um yeah individuals they're like much more committed and also build up like a stronger bond like with the child they sponsor so they really like yeah stay committed over several years most of our sponsors are with us almost, uh, four or five years and they don't quit and of course with the recurring option it's just the easiest thing for us uh, before donor box, we had to do it manually, and this was a pain in the ass because we always had to check who already made the payment, who did not make the payment, and always emailing them. And yeah, so with donor box, it became yeah very very easier for us. And also because we work with individual people, if one person drops out, then he at least doesn't take ten kids with him. You know, it's usually then only a sponsor drops out for one child, and then we can find a faster replacement to really like, yeah, make sure the kids go to school for years. Um, yeah, next slide. Okay, and a quick question, like yeah. what works best now for you because you got like uh, recurring donations yeah. and one-time donations and you got a lot of emails, like which is the biggest one uh, for you to get the donations in? Is that now the recurring setup? Like that's yeah. the most, yeah, best way to work. Yeah. I mean, uh, the recurring definitely for the school sponsorships because we have like mm -hmm. 430 sponsors who are doing like the recurring subscription. And then the great thing is, uh, since those people are like, so, they get like regular updates from us. Whenever we do the one-time donations or the one-time fundraisers, uh, they most like they most of the time also participate. You know, so you basically build up like a strong community network with the procuring donations and because those people are already committed whenever you need an extra donation like right now because of the lockdown uh, to those people who are already recurring uh, subscribers you know and then you explain them like the urgent need of like a one-time extra donation and then uh, most of the time they're more willing as well to give this one-time donation but of course you have to make a balance like i'm not disturbing our sponsors every month with a new fundraiser campaign um, so I really like pay attention to only like ask them for extra donations if it's really, really necessary. Um, but they can also make extra donations for the children, which are one-time donations. Then we have our food program, which is mostly also recurring donations because we really want to be sure that every single month the kids get food. And then again, if a business tells us, oh, Stella, we have like 8,000 euros. Yeah, great. Then I can give like the kids food for, let's say four months and then after it's not sustainable anymore. So we also have uh, our small business programs where we really also invest in like a mice field and things like that. That, um, yeah, it's not just like one time handouts, but also over there that the projects are becoming like much more self sustainable. And um, yeah, people really have things like on the long term and not just like a one time um, relief. Nice one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Next yeah, slide. Then with the donations, of oh, course, the cool yeah, thing yeah. is we have also like uh, we always like um, encourage and motivate our long-term sponsors, you know, to share our um, one-time donation fundraiser campaigns with their friends, which they often also do. So even you know, uh, if you have like people are saying like you know what, I don't want to uh, become a long-term sponsor of Tenny to Stars because I want I want to sponsor to the let's say the uh, forest project, then I want to sponsor to the water project you know some people they like to donate to different charities uh so then they will still be reached by our long-term sponsors and sponsors are also uh our um visita how would you say that our, yeah 
uh, little business, business card. card. <laughs> yeah, our ambassador, <laughs> you know, because they have been with us for such a long time. So they're obviously also like the best people to explain to others like, hey, I really trust this foundation because I have been a sponsor since four or five years. Um, and as mentioned before, people can also come to Uganda and visit our projects. Um, so many, many sponsors already came to Uganda. I think about 80 or 90, they uh, already visited us. So they could also see in real life, like the impact. And then again, share like our uh, donation campaigns. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really cool. <laughs> yeah. So this is like, yeah, exactly explaining how sponsorship works. Um, so yeah, you choose a child, pick a payment plan, um, you receive the sponsor certificate and you get three times a year, like school reports and updates. And you can also yeah, interact with uh, le letters and extra gifts, things like that. Um, and we actually keep like an Excel list spreadsheet, like Google spreadsheet with a lot of information. So for example, name of the sponsor, but also name of the kid, when they started sponsoring, how much they're sponsoring. Um, then also regarding the child, certain information like what's the favorite color, the favorite school subject, or regarding the sponsor, I sometimes make notes like, oh, I met this person at a conference, or this person is a friend of a friend. Um, so whenever we are fundraising, we send out like emails uh, using GMAS, like Gmail, and then we make our emails like super specified because with the Google spreadsheet, you can, um, I said it like insert, you know, like the word from certain columns inside your email, like just like this first name, last name. And then our emails are like super, um, how you say that, um, um, customized. And we usually get a lot of positive feedback from our sponsors. Because if I just would say like, hi, Terry, this is our new campaign, you would be like, okay, great. But if I'm saying yeah. like, hi, Terry, how are you doing? Um, yeah, it was so nice to have met you like one year ago at the Nomad Cruise conference. Uh, thank you for sponsoring child um, Rebecca. Her favorite color is pink, blah, blah, blah. She wants to become a doctor. Thanks to you, like she's on the way of this. And then I'm introducing like the fundraiser campaign. You know, and yeah, so it's it's more personal. Yeah. Yeah. So then the sponsors also like, yeah, it feels really that like, I'm really talking to them and not like I'm just sending out a newsletter or something. Yeah. And also, Stella, what I really like about your, especially your homepage, and that's why we made a print screen here. And that's also an example for all the nonprofits here today is that it's so visual. So it is just how, what, why. And it's just in one like eye-catching nice thing to see like what are the sponsors saying and like how does it work just make little simple steps and this visual aspect i think it's so important instead of just having a lot of text because people don't really read it anyway yeah. so i think you did a great job here to make it visual and make it really clear to people um, how it actually work so yeah that's why we just added this uh, slide here um, it's a great example Thank you. But you would be, by the way, surprised how many people it's still will not understand how it works. So yeah. I guess in the end, you just can't please everyone. And for a long time, I had my WhatsApp on my website, so people could immediately um, WhatsApp me if they wanted to sponsor a child. But then, unfortunately, I got like too many crap on my WhatsApp, so I stopped it. But yeah. uh, I guess even if your website is super, super clear, some sponsors they also want like this personal connection with you and first email you and then get an email back and then only sponsor yeah really so cool and this is the last right. uh, question to yeah. you uh, uh stella like what is like in a nutshell your like experience what what you would like to give to other non-profit here out of your experience mm -hmm. like do this it's really like, build course, the community it's really important so my mind would be really like build a community and really treat your uh, donor sponsors like clients or customers you know and really like make sure that um yeah they are like the king and keep them you know because it's 10 times easier to um motivate a, a, a current sponsor you already have to donate more than to find a new sponsor so really if you have a few sponsors like keep them and also make use of their network and motivate them to also share about your organization yeah, lovely. Thank you so much. And I would like to say to everyone, 
please have a look at uh, her website and especially her jewelry because that's absolutely uh, yeah. well, look, stunning. That it sucks a bit at the moment. I have to really update it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we'll do that soon. But yeah. Stella, thank you so much for your experiences. And um, yeah, we're happy to go to our next guest speaker. And uh, that's uh, Jan Willem. Perfect. Okay, great. Jan Willem, welcome. And thank you so much for uh, willing to share your uh, experiences. We got a couple of uh, slides for you. Um, and I also would like to say to all the other nonprofits, if you have other questions for Stella or Jan Willem, we also got a chat function here. So if you would like to have like a chat with other people or write down your questions, in the end, we will have a Q&A to answer all your questions. Um, Jan Willem, I think we're ready for rock and roll. Uh, do you have the function? Would you like to go to the slides or would you like to do the same as Stella that I click on the next one? What is your preference? No, let me do the slides. That's okay. Perfect. Okay, yes. great. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks, Terry, for in for inviting us to be here. And uh, uh, thank you, Stella, for your uh, amazing message. Uh, really cool to, to hear your passion behind it and how you organized it. Um, I'm leading Jesus.net, which is an international network uh, with uh, uh, the slide says uh, 85, uh, but it's more than 100 uh, Christian organizations at this moment. Uh, working together, um, especially around people who are searching for the meaning of life. And we are trying to lead them into understanding what Christianity means. And then we uh, help those people to grow in their, uh, their faith and start to understand more about Christianity. Um, and during this process, uh, which we do now in 34 languages, we also invite people to start to donate. So everything is for free but we uh, give them opportunities to start to donate. So uh, as Stella was also saying, our business model is fully based on, uh, on donations. Um, I'm working in, the, in, in organizations who are living on donations already for 20 years, in the last 10 years for, for Jesus.net. Um, we've been struggling with, uh, with donations, how to get it done in the right way because it was always difficult with tools and how to integrate it in the right way. And since three years, we are using DonorBox and it's exploding the donations that we are having. It's, it's really amazing how DonorBox is fitting our needs. So I really speak from, a, from a, a, a big experience from the past and it was always a struggle. And now we can 10 times more with less people. Um, and I want to give you some, some really uh, practical examples. I won't go too much in detail about what we are doing. If you want to know more, you can always uh, connect to me. Uh, but I want to focus on what uh, the meaning is for of um, of using DonorBox. Um, what we found out is that it's it's really simply online giving. It's not it's not difficult to give with DonorBox. Um, uh, yesterday I started a campaign, a new campaign. Uh, in DonorBox, and I created it in 10 minutes. That's all you have to do. It's it's not more work. Um, and it's for the for the user, it's very simple. Uh, it, the process is optimized so that you don't lose a lot of people in the uh, uh, in the whole process. Uh, what we see is that it's focused around the the engagement strategy. So in in our engaging people into our journey, it's it's very logical to uh, to connect to DonorBox and uh, use that as a simple, logical part in the whole thing. Um, another example of what is really helpful is that the uh, administration and all the analyzers that you can do with, with DonorBox is pretty simple. Um, another part is that I think you, when you are uh, watching to this, uh, uh, this webinar, uh, really use the momentum of Corona. People are used to uh, to giving online, so you can really use this momentum to make people get, let people give more online. And lastly, uh, I, I, I told you already, it's very simple to create campaigns. So we are using DonorBox. Uh, we are starting to use it in all the languages. We're using it now in, in uh, uh, six languages. We will move it during the year to the other. Uh, languages in all the countries and we follow where all the the currencies are available 
and all the payment systems. Uh, and we've seen a huge growth. So just to give you a few numbers, um, we started uh, three years ago with DonorBox uh, in the fall. We had a small uh, number of uh, donations in that year. It was around $50,000. Uh, uh, last year, we had uh, $350,000 through DonorBox. Wow. And this year, we already have, uh, until now, uh, around 300,000 uh, uh, euros in donor box. Um, and that's, of course, it has to do with the growth that we are doing as an organization, but also because we moved to use donor box. Um, we've done uh, a, a quite a long research about what kind of tool we need to use. We used all kinds of different tools in the past. Um, we started to use donor box in, uh, in English. Uh, three years ago, we uh, we did the research and we found it's the, it's really the best choice for us. Um, it's 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 very functional. Um, uh, we've seen that the financial growth is is taking off. And what I really like about working with DonorBox that there is a fast response from the developers. We've worked with other co other uh, platforms and it was really hard when you have an, a, a bug or something like that. You try to fix it. And it takes months and sometimes years before something is fixed. And we've seen with DonorBox, there's really a fast uh, fast track to uh, to repair things and to respond to what we're doing. Last year, we uh, we made the change to, uh, or this year we made the change to the Dutch situation. Uh, until uh, last year, it wasn't so easy to integrate everything in the for the Dutch situation. Uh, but now Ideal is added to to, uh, to the payment systems and now it's it's really, easy to implement it and to replace. Uh, we are using Molly now as a system and we are replacing everything uh, to DonorBox. Um, some advantages to, uh, to share with you. Um, DonorBox is really focused on getting a better user experience. Um, second, the way it's set up is really giving more donations and thirdly, the administration is not so much as it was before. And some extra things, there is this option of covering donation costs, I'll show you, year-end receipt and some campaigns. Uh, user experience is really, really important. I think that's what uh, Terry already shared that uh, uh, with uh, the, the previous speaker to show that it's important that your website is clear and that all the steps are clear. And um, yeah, this, this is a, a, maybe a, a well-known picture, the frog behavior model, uh, when uh, it, it's easy to do and people don't have a big motivation, you can get much more people to be activated. And that's why it's so easy to integrate uh, DonorBox into your system, into your website, and it's very intuitive. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't mention that in this presentation, but we are connecting DonorBox to Salesforce, so we integrate all the, the, the financial aspects we integrate into our CRM system. We've seen that there is uh, an easy way of getting more income. Before we used DonorBox, we had a form to fill in and people had to fill in the numbers. And then you see all the fields below and you need to fill in uh, your name, your account numbers, your address, everything. And we, we know by experience that that's um, pushing off people. By having this simple page, by you can choose for one-time donation or monthly, fill in the number. In fact, people already made their decision to donate. Um, so by using this example of donor box, if you click next, then you will see the payment method. And we've seen that when people already start to, to, to give the number and the monthly or not, automatically or a much higher percentage of the people finish this whole process. If you have everything on one page, uh, the percentage of people that you're losing is much higher. And we found out that uh, there is 30% uh, more donations because we are using this way of implementing DonorBox. And what you see here, in the bottom, I don't know if you see my mouse, but you see uh, optional uh, to 
to pay for the the the, the costs that are included for uh, the transfers etc we've seen that a lot of people are clicking that button so that you don't have to cover those costs as a, as an organization um, we've also seen that less time is needed we had one guy doing our administration and it took him uh, two days a, a week to deal with all the donations and now it's it's really a few hours per month that he's he's working on it uh, the the admin function of DonorBox is is very easy and very simple to use. Um, the thank you messages that DonorBox is sending to every donation, uh, it's so helpful and people are pleased by it because it's you you make the donation and you have a nice letter to thank you for that. Um, the reminders are working very well. Um, uh, in the past, we had often that the credit card is over time, uh, but DonorBox is reminding you. And uh, we see that most people are uh, then changing the credit card uh, on time. And what I'd like to show you later also, the year-end receipts are really a blessing. Um, yeah, some other, other extras. Uh, analyzing the data, um, there is a CRM inside of a donor box that is, is very helpful to show you what kind of people are giving monthly or in another way, which kind of regions, what kind of currencies. Uh, it's easy to create new project projects as i shared before um, and it's very easy to to add information about newsletters feedback to people and of course having multiple currencies is very helpful uh, i don't know if that that means a lot for you uh, but we are active in many countries so having all those kind of options really helps us a lot i'll give you a few examples because the time is short um, most of the time we are looking for donations. This is a, a paid version. We, we did a paid product. So when people are in the process, we offer them an audio guide for 21 days of listening to God's voice. And we gave people uh, options uh, to pay uh, $47 for it. If they want to pay double or 97 is when they bless someone else. Uh, they, there is also a custom field. They can fill in their own field because we don't want the finances are a hindrance for them. And even if people didn't want to or didn't have the opportunity to pay, they could send us an email and we would send it to them. Uh, this was a small campaign. And here you see the results. Um, we, uh, we got uh, almost $50,000 coming out of that uh, with all kinds of different currencies. And after uh, the campaign, we did a satisfaction uh, measurement and we had 98% uh, of the people were satisfied about the whole process, including the donation thing. Give you a second example. Uh, we uh, are starting in Portuguese. It's a difficult language uh, because uh, the banking system is not so well connected. Um, everyone warned us, don't think it will really work out and doesn't have any sense to do that with DonorBox. Uh, we just tried it. And uh, even with a small amount of people that we, we had in that country, uh, we had uh, 15,000 uh, Brazilian dollars uh, out of that. And we see that it's, it's, it's really working. So maybe not all local currencies are available, but it really helps you to be available and have something like this in the, in the language uh, available. And that's the easy thing of DonorBox. You create, a, you create a campaign and you can test if it's working. Last year, we did all together, uh, I think about 50 different campaigns in the different languages. Uh, so we're testing a lot to see if things are working. Recently, we did uh, a Spanish uh, monthly campaign. So we, we offered people uh, a product that they could receive if they started to give us uh, on a monthly basis. And um, we were very surprised by the results. We had expected about 1,000 uh, dollars on a monthly basis uh, but as you can see it's more than three thousand dollars on a monthly basis and coming from all different currencies um, just imagine you have to do something like that with another tool that's really hard it's all included in donor books another thing that i'd like to show you is the is the year end receipt um, we we have also always been struggling and I mentioned already our administrator, 
he had to send all the year-end receipts to the people. And that was a, a lot of work, <laughs> a hell of a job, I would say. He was, he was crazy working on it. It took him the whole month of January to create all those year-end receipts and make it well. Um, we, we already knew it was working in English. Um, and we seen in 2019 that it was easy. So on the 3rd of January, we could finish all the year end receipts already for the whole year. So we talked with DonorBox uh, in December last year that we also wanted to do this in, uh, in French and in Dutch. And it was, it was hard because it was not a part of, uh, of, the, of the situation. Uh, but with the help of DonorBox, they were able to create a year end receipt for French and Dutch. And uh, they had to do some, some really special additions, which are not normal. In French, for instance, you need to not only write uh, the, the figures. So uh, let's say someone gives 10 euros, you give a one and a zero. Now it also has to be written as 10 T-E-N. And uh, that's fixed by, uh, by the people from DonorBox. And uh, that helped us a lot. And we we'd been able to, uh, uh, yeah, to, uh, to meet the needs of the people uh, on time. So um, my advice to all people that are uh, watching uh, and the people that you meet, uh, try to use DonorBox in a good way. Connect to Terry. He will help you to implement it. Um, and uh, I'm sure, I'm really sure, convinced that your donations will go up by at least 25%. Thank, Thank you so you much uh, for uh, giving me the time. Yeah, I've got a quick last uh, question, Jan Willem, because um, like we got a little bit of the downtime, what we discuss as like the title of our um, webinar. Is there also for you um, like a downtime during the year or uh, because we had COVID, for example, so it was really difficult for churches to get donations, gifts in. Um, yeah. Do you see during the year somewhere where you go up and then you prepare with campaigns doing something for the other season or is it quite stable? No, absolutely. There are absolutely seasons. It depends a little bit per, cult per culture. Um, uh, in the US, especially December is the number one month. Uh, mm -hmm. More than 30% of all the donations are given in, this, given in December. Um, it depends a little bit per, per other, in other countries. So we have uh, in Brazil, uh, we know the campaign uh, in April worked pretty well. Um, for the Netherlands, um, we use the month of December because it's also uh, people want to give in that period. And also the month of May. Um, I think it has to do that then vacation money is, uh, uh, is, is paid by the, by the employers. By the and then and then people can do a little bit more. So we always target our donation campaigns uh, the end of May and the beginning of December. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a, a great to see the differences dur during the year. Um, yeah. Thanks again, uh, uh, Jan Willem, and and we're so happy to see your growth. Thanks to to DonorBox. And we have uh, Killian now on stage as well, as you mentioned, with the year end receipt that. Wow, Killian did such a great job just to jump in here. And this is really what we do as donor box because yes. if you need something, then we are willing to adapt and to help and to assist to get your organization uh, to work. Um, so as a next step, uh, we're jumping to uh, Killian and uh, yeah, really excited to uh, listen to his story. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. Um, I'm very excited for you all to be here, and Jan Willem and Stella, thank you so much for with your inputs uh, to this webinar. Um, I'd like to take a few things that both Stella and Jan Willem said, put them together, and see how we can boost our summertime campaigns. Um, with DonorBox, we build our product for nonprofits. It's not a standard CRM, it's not a standard piece of software. Uh, my experience in fundraising has been one for the past 10 years within Ireland, the UK, and the Netherlands. So. I've seen a lot of different nonprofits, what's required and what's not required. So if again, once if, if you do have questions, please feel free to use the chat option so we can we can answer them at the end. Um, I will pop in. Yeah, so just with the donor box, when you look at creating a donation form, think about how your form will sit within your site. 
It's important, especially during summertime, that your form is visible immediately as, as, as immediately as possible. Embedded donation forms usually sit on yourwebsite.com slash donate. A pop-up donation form is um, one that literally pops up in front of the of the user, similar to how, how our donate but, uh, button works. Um, my recommendation for the summertime is to consider having your donation form directly on your homepage. It will really drive people to understand that you are in need of this cash to forward your uh, for, forward your mission. Pop-up donation forms and especially crowdfunding campaigns as well are getting more and more popular during the summertime. In the Netherlands and especially within Northern Europe, crowdfunding campaigns are starting to take off in a similar trend to that of the US. So with our one of our features is actually a crowdfunding option that might be worthwhile to set some goals and to post this on your on your donation or on your on your website. Um, so with the options that we have, we also offer a donation wall where your donors can interact with your fundraiser to post their comments about your your mission, uh, to say thank you to you, to, to give you some feedback. It's all available within the donation wall. The goal meter is also available to show at the top of your of your form to, so, to say you started at zero and now you're at a thousand, two thousand euros. And also the options of sharing on social media, of course. Everybody needs to see to be sharing on social media. Um, but what's most important during the summertime, in my opinion, from my experience with like uh, with nonprofits like the the Red Cross or the IFRC, World Vision, um, is that donor care is most important in the summertime. Not only to engage with your donors, but to make your donor remember that they that you are in contact with them for later on in the year. So what I would say is a feedback or a survey would be good to think about during these next couple of months to put together a simple um, survey monkey or whatever you use to gather your surveys, send them in an email, or even pick up the phone if you have the correct GDPR rights to call your donors, um, and to sort of, sort of gather more information about your donors. Bear in mind that within DonorBox, we do have an option to store this information within the communication record section of the donor profile. So any information that you gather, you can store within there. If you are looking to sort of get cash now, it's better during the summertime to ask for small, softer asks. So for example, you should probably think about aligning your asks with donation amounts that have been given before. Once again, in DonorBox, I'm sure you've probably seen it before, but you can export your donor history and donation history so you can ask for the right amount of money. For example, if I have given to your nonprofit uh, three times in the past year for 20 euros each time, I would probably ask for 20 to 25 euros again. Nothing too extravagant, just at the same level as what was happening before. It's also important, especially during COVID times, to just check in with your donors, see how they're doing. Um, one thing that I've learned is that a phone call for older donors goes a long way in donor care. Um, it increases legacy rates year on year by you know between five and 10% as well. So having that relationship with the donor with the donors as Stella was saying before to have them as your friends to have them not as your as your donor that's that's just giving to you there are people who are really assisting the, the, the mission that you're putting forward um when you are checking in with your donors as well you can also of course ask them more information about what they're more interested in what's best for them what new communications do they want to receive um i'm sure as fundraisers you know as well that one of the most difficult things is to figure out which emailings or direct mailings to send. So this is the opportune time to clean up your database at this point and to have a more standardized and personalized service for your donors. That kind of leads me on to my next point here, show that you appreciate them. These are people that are helping you with your, with your, with, with your mission. You want to reach out to them on the phone and give them a big hug, right? So this is absolutely crucial um, to to communicating with your donors on a, on a person by person level. And also, depending on your mission, but I found that nine times out of 10, keeping the conversation with your donors as colloquial as possible, as basic as possible, and not to use um, extravagant terms or words that are not familiar with the, uh, with the donor, absolutely crucial. Uh, I think we did a test back in 2015 for Ireland and the UK and Belgium, I believe, with a particular nonprofit. And using basic terms had a better effect by about 20 to 30 percent 
uh, per donation, then a, a response rate, I should say, my apologies, a response rate was higher with colloquial terms than an extravagant, um, long um, donation campaign. So keep the conversation colloquial, keep it snappy, and just keep it friendly, really. Um, crucial as well for the summertime, where are your old donors? Where have they gone? So it's time that you look into reactivation campaigns if you haven't already done so. Uh, email, call, or lapsed, or mailing lapsed donors um, to see if they can continue their old donations is crucial at this point. You may not have heard from them for a long time. Maybe they've opted out so you can't use them anymore. But for those who you still have permissions for, who have given relatively decent amount of money, let's say 20 euros plus per month, it's time to give them a call. It's time to send them a, an email to see if they want to come back on board to assist you further. With the ask amounts for these particular donors, it's better to have a fraction of what they previously gave. So for example, if a person gave 30 euros per month, let's start at 10 euros per month to ask them, can you come back on board for 10? And then we can start into the upgrade side of things later on. Um, it's also important to reassure the donor of their of their part of the that they are part of the family that they're part of the group. So when they give this ten euros per month, two fifty of it is going to what? The five euros going where? So to have those crucial pieces of information ready before you communicate, if, let's say if it's an instant communication like a phone call, massively essential so they can see penny by penny. Um, where the funding is going because as we all know transparency is key within the charity sector so we need to be able to provide that immediately um, my second recommendation as well for a summertime campaign are upgrade campaigns um, i proudly did a, a campaign within ireland for a thousand we contacted ten thousand donors and we got an average of one euro fifty per person in upgrades so, for example, that converted then into 1,500 euros in extra income per month from a call campaign that barely took us maybe a month to do. So it, in the long term, after year one, the returns are well worth the investment for an upgrade campaign. Typically, upgrade campaigns, should, you should ask for between 10 and 20 percent. If, if the campaign is quite a big like uh, real estate project or a larger project overseas, 30% is usually okay too. But with all that, regardless of, and I'm going to keep saying it, it's important to inspire your donors. Um, ensure that they are aware of your goals and ensure that they are aware of how they are helping penny by penny. So with that... Um, I think we will follow on now with a quick Q&A. Terry, is that okay with you? Yeah, perfect. Um, are there any people who have questions? Or like we, we obviously got, got the chat. Please drop some questions here. Or, or if people are like, yeah, it's all clear that we have a follow-up uh, later with you. Are there people who questions? And in the case that there is not, myself and Terry are going to follow up with you guys this afternoon with a video just to, um, to, to conclude this webinar with some helpful uh, presentations, too, on how to boost your fundraising during the summertime. Um, and also, if you wish to have a 30-minute session with myself and Terry to analyze how your campaigns are progressing for the past, even if before, it was Dona, uh, before you used DonorBox into now, we can do a full analysis of how your campaigns are progressing um, so that is possible so what we are going to do is then send you an email with a link to book a slot with us and then you're more than welcome to, to, to join us for a conversation great one I assume that things were clearer then Terry I, I think so and yes. uh, <laughs> But again, thank you so much, uh, Stella and Jan Willem, uh, to joining us today. And yeah, we're really uh, looking forward to have um, yeah, like a private session with you. Uh, Kili and I will have uh, uh, a call with you. And that's really great because I, I am local Dutch and Killian has all the experiences in the product side of DonorBox. So we're really keen to help you and to optimize your fundraising uh, campaigns. Um, I think last but not least, let's share our Dutch 
video and then we uh i think they were done like we yeah. are almost done with an hour perfect Perfect. Okay. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon, and hope to speak to you soon again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.